developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. Here in the heart of the Midwest, the call of the wild meets the passion for conservation. At Nebraska Game and Parks, we're not just preserving nature, we are shaping its future. Work in our state parks or as a biologist, accountant, conservation officer, or a variety of other roles. And come work where you love to play. You can make a difference for Nebraskans and for our state's wildlife and wild places. Apply today at OutdoorNebraska.gov. Paid for by Nebraska Game and Park. Aired in cooperation with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. Welcome into Fitness Fanatics on 937 A Ticket and TheTicketFM.com. Now here are your hosts, Jeff and Nicole Essig. All right, there we go. Now I can hear myself. Welcome in Fitness Fanatics, Sunday, March 24th. Hope everybody had a great week. Probably a little rough Friday night for most Husker fans there early, but the women saved the day as usual. <laughs> right, Harrison? Before we talk about yes. we have stuff to talk about. I, that was just my intro. It's fine. <laughs> we do have a trivia question. So, Harrison, I'll let you go take that there. Yeah, so real quick on the last show, if you guys were listening to Bigger Than The Score, we were going to give away a free bag of coffee, coffee by Josh. Uh, stuff smells incredible. So, again, the question, easy for you guys. Who was the last Big Ten team to win the men's tournament? That's the only question right there. So, first one to get it. That bag of coffee is yours. Um, and again, first one to text in. So 402-464-5685, who was the last Big Ten team to win the men's tournament? And we'll update that on whoever gets that in there first. No, oh. no spoilies, Jeff. Don't well, worry. I know who it was instantly <laughs> when I walked in here. But that's okay. Yeah. That's my knowledge. You got a Wisconsin that's incorrect. Frank the Tank fell just short. Frank the Tank. We also have Bubba texted in Wisconsin mm -hmm. as well. So that's wrong that is wrong. wrong they were in the national championship wrong. but they did not win <laughs> i think i think bub was just flying out uh big 10 teams now just it's <laughs> like auto type just do 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 process do process of elimination process of elimination okay. all right so we'll keep an eye on it mm -hmm. all yeah. right so we started our 10-week challenge yesterday out at the gym had a good crowd there um so that's always exciting for us also you me. had oh, an yeah. event yesterday too why don't you talk about that a little bit yeah so i did the uh there was an event called inspire girls lincoln it was down at the innovation campus it was really cool they had 300 tickets sold i don't know what the final count was um for attendance but it was really cool it was a three-hour event um I, girls of all ages and there was like a bunch of different activities they could take a part in stem activities um some like uh confidence and stuff like that so we went out there uh, me and some of our instructors we went out there to lead a fitness part so we took out our mitts and our gloves and that was fun and we had a little kickboxing session section a strength training and then an ab cardio one and so it was really cool it was fun it was awesome and to see the girls come up to do just is especially well all of them but you know little five six year olds and be real timid at first trying to punch those mitts and then once they got the hang of it they were just really it was fun it was yeah. a lot of fun and you got a compliment <laughs> oh yeah it's one little girl i went to i lifted up my arm to show her a hook punch and she goes oh your muscles are so big <laughs> like thank you it was Great compliment. It was, but it was so much fun. It was fun. <laughs> we have people waving. Oh, we got waving. Is that Mike? Uh, is, yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Who is that? That's awesome. <laughs> he's going to text it. Oh, is that Bubba? And Dre. No, no. He's okay. going to text it. Who is it? Mike? <laughs> Bubba. Perfect. Oh, Bubba. Yeah, most oh, okay. I was That's texting funny. in there. Yeah. He was texting in his guys. We got it right. Bubba, the copy's yours. Michigan State. That's awesome. Was okay. the answer? Two thousand. Tom Mizzo. Well, he's, Weird. He's right down at the station. Going to come in and collect right away. Well, he <laughs> drove by. Could have. Yeah, I he's suppose. right here. <laughs> yeah. Coffee's here, so. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes. Anyway, so yeah, it was a really fun event. Um, it's been going on, I think, a couple times. I mean, it's gone on before, but I definitely look forward to doing it again. It was really fun. 
Maggie Thorne was there. She was one of the keynote speakers. She's been on our show before. So that was cool. Got to see her. So all yeah, right. That was me. Awesome. Well, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor. Fitness Fanatics is sponsored by Integrative Life Choices. ILC is hiring direct support professionals all over the state of Nebraska, full-time, part-time days, evenings, and weekends. If you're interested, you can apply at ilc.net backslash careers. Direct support professionals work to ensure a meaningful life for the people they support. They work to support people in achieving their hopes and dreams. So thank you very much to ILC for being a sponsor on the Fitness Fanatics. <clears throat> so later, uh, coming up here, in about 20 minutes, we actually have three guests coming into the show. Um, two young ladies from Lincoln Southwest that are part of their unified program there, along with Brandy Benson, who's been on the show a couple times with us. So we're going to talk about that. Sometimes we just have to flex a little bit. Uh, Pete's not the only one that knows outstanding youths. So we got to we got to represent. Too, yeah, absolutely. So. <laughs> so we have some kids coming in on our show. Yeah. We know some cool kids also. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll be in here talking about that. Um, Harrison, how's your bracket in the bracket challenge? I want to know if I'm beating you right now because I have uh, one. Let in, me, in well, the you could look. Let me yeah, pull it up. Real quick. I will give the fans oh. bracket because we did create a fans bracket on one on one. That would have been. Uh, I believe Wednesday. The fans bracket was doing great. The only problem is they had Nebraska winning it all, which I get it. <laughs> there's some bias there, but they are. They're at 82%. Oh. And if I go to my bracket, my lowly bracket, I'm sitting at 45%. Um, I had Auburn going to the championship game. Mm. Winning it or just going there? Going there. I just got. I still got Houston, Purdue, Arizona in my final four. But I messed up with Auburn. Pretty bad. Kentucky hurt. And uh, yeah. What, what place are you on in the ticket standings? Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm 122nd place. I'm in the sure. Ticket pool. I'm sure you're doing far better than me. If I go to the ticket... <laughs> 200 and 350 all right <laughs> towards the bottom here i'm kind of the same boat i had kentucky in the final four along with uh connecticut arizona and purdue and i went against everything that i believe in mm -hmm. and i picked purdue to win it all i had uconn going to the entire <laughs> all the way to the championship game until yeah. about five minutes before tip-off and i was like you know what i'm buying in on this auburn hype <laughs> they just came out of the ACC, sec champ i'm like Let's buy into it. And uh, luckily, my only saving grace is <laughs> I got a lot of points left on the board. So as yeah. long as I can stay on the right, I'm not out of it. But uh, I'm certainly not going to be winning the ticket bracket if the person ahead of me also has Houston winning it all, which yeah. is probably going to be the case. Yeah, you like, I think there's there's not very many people that pick Purdue to win it. So I've always just, I really just look at when I'm looking at this, like who picked Purdue to win? And that's who I'm focusing on. Because mm -hmm. if really, if you pick the winner, you have a good chance to finish at the top. You yeah. just have to beat the other guys that pick the winner. So I had I had been complaining about Purdue and the Big Ten all year. They're terrible. They're this, that. But then I thought there's been two teams that have lost to a 16th seed ever in the history of the basketball tournament. First one was Virginia. The next year they won the title. The other one was Purdue, who lost last year. So I'm kind of hoping that <clears throat> gets them refocused. And then here we go. So you got Purdue winning it all? Purdue, yep. I, it's not a bad pick. I will say they when it looks like to the route they have to play, like it seems like they got the easiest road. Not because the teams are playing or less, but matchup wise, like I like my odds if it is a Purdue versus Crate. Ooh, yeah, that'll be good. Like that seems in favor of Purdue big time. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's where we stand. Mm -hmm. You're not doing too bad. Not too bad. Yes, I have some. I you know there's some teams I bought into a little bit that <laughs> shouldn't have, like Kentucky. Uh, well, so, I will say this. That anytime you're picking a team, Kentucky, everyone loves Kentucky, but that team was giving up 80 points a game on average. Those teams typically fade out pretty fast. That's round one, round two. When you're when you're getting towards past 75 top deficiency or defensive rating, like those teams typically fade out, fade out pretty quickly. And that's exactly what happened to Kentucky. Yeah. And, it, you know, the SEC was doing really bad. And I thought it was real it meant good things for Nebraska. But I'll tell you what. That AM team was like, I mean, they were fantastic. It, it is one thing though, it was to have crazy a team that yeah. is predicated on driving to the rim and a very simple high pick and roll offense where it's like Wade Taylor's kind of our green light guy, but for the most part, it's downhill attack the rim, offensive rebounds. Mm -hmm. And when they're hitting every single three point shot, yep. What, what, what are you, you going to take away? Like <clears throat> they're, they're elite at driving to the rim, but now you got to worry about 
one of the best three point shooting teams in college, and, obviously. And they'll give them credit. They'll probably start 0 for 10 today. It's, this is a tough matchup for Houston because Houston is, is they're yeah. gonna be like they they are totally okay if you want to attack them at the rim all day long. Yeah, they're like, come on, bring yeah. it down. I, I guess you know, knock on wood, but I, I don't think they're gonna shoot that well two two times in a row. So yeah. I think it's a tough matchup for them. Well, we also have the ladies playing today at three o'clock. Is it three against, or three thirty? Three. Three o'clock yeah. versus Oregon State. Yep. Yep. Out up in Corvallis. So that'll be fun to watch. Um before we get to Nicole, you wanted to bring up something since we're all what were we going to say we're before we empowering get to? women today. Oh, it's not all, just about <laughs> empowering women. Oh, what? What you say? What did you say before we get to what break? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. It took about ten minutes, but <clears throat> yeah, we okay. don't want to go too much sports talk here for you. <laughs> anyway, so there's uh, Harrison. Have you ever heard of the Barkley Marathons? No. Okay. So we, you know, we always talk about how there's always someone crazier. I feel like the people who participate in the Barkley marathons are the crazier. So this, this race that happens every year, I'll just give you some stats real quick before we talk about it. Cause it just happened on Wednesday. So that's why we're talking about it. But so for one, you have better odds of winning the lottery than getting into the race, let alone finishing it, it. One more time. Don't look at it yet. No spoilies. <laughs> okay. He's going to read all about <laughs> it. No, I've got it. <laughs> I don't know anything about parent. Allegedly she's told me about I it. I have because there's but... a documentary about it. <laughs> let alone finishing it. So it says more than 20,000 people have completed a hike, a through hike of the Appalachian Trail. Over 8,000 people have summited Mount Everest and another 1,800 people have swam the length of the English Channel. It says, although, I'm reading an article in Runner's World or Marathon Handbook. Um, it says, although competing in any of these feats puts you in elite club, there is no endeavor as selective as the Barkley Marathons. Since 1986, only 17 people have completed the 100 miles of the Barkley Marathons. <laughs> so to break it down. What a teaser. What it is. I know. It's crazy. So it's in, um, it's in Frozen Head State Park in, I don't know. I want to say it's like Tennessee. I have, I have screenshots. I just have to go back and find it. Um, uh, Tennessee. Okay. Yeah. Bird, Bird, That's what I thought. Yeah. It's in Tennessee. So you don't know when it's going to start. It starts anywhere between midnight and noon on a certain day. Like you just have to be there. You don't know when it's going to start. The registration process is kind of funny. I don't know what it is, but the cost to register is like a dollar 60. It's like, <laughs> it's a really weird race. <laughs> it was, there's this one, there's a documentary on it. You should definitely check it out if this sounds interesting to anybody. Not to do it, just but just to watch people do dumb stuff. But there's some really weird and wild things in this uh, race. So it's a five loop. You have to do five loops in this uh, in this park. And <clears throat> to complete the race, you have to do five loops of the course. The first two are often done in the same direction. The second two are run in the opposite direction. And then one or the other for the final loop. And each loop must be done in 12 hours to even attempt the full course. So, I mean, that gives you an idea of how hard it is, like 12 hours to for one loop. And there's five loops. And so um, unless you're attempting the fun run, which is three loops with a time limit of 13 hours, 20 minutes for each loop, that's their the fun run of the Barkley Marathons. So it's in what do we say tennessee yeah yeah Wartburg, tennessee yeah so it's in this the middle of the wilderness like i think there used to be like a prison out there and the reason the prison was there is because you, if you broke out like it was harder to get out of alcatraz or, than alcatraz so it's in the middle of a four i'm looking at oh yeah pictures and they're kind of just outlining the loop for you it's up and down the mountain oh yeah through thick woods the entire time yeah it's, there's no opening it's wild there's i mean it's trails um not a lot of uh, even trails. Sometimes you're just walking through whatever. You have like GPS. No, you don't have. There's no GPS. I don't even know how they follow the map. But you wear a bib and <laughs> the checkpoints for the bib. If anyone's ever done races before, when you typically like, you know, Jeff, when you run a half marathon, you wear your bib. And then there's certain parts on the course where you cross over yeah, and it yeah. updates people like 5K, 10K finish line and mm -hmm. it tells people well the bib for the barkley marathon does not do that it doesn't measure splits it doesn't measure anything what it does is um 
each loop, the runners are required to make it to certain points in the park. And at those checkpoints, there are books that the race coordinator has placed there. And the racers have to tear out the page of the book that corresponds with their bib number. And that's how they check in mm. at each checkpoint of the race. <laughs> so there's like typically nine to 11 books placed in the woods. And if you are missing a page, then you didn't officially complete the loop. There's one map at the start line for runners to copy and no GPS technology or course markings are available for the runners. And the funny thing is, I know at least two people that I think would think that this is uh, something that would be fun to do. <laughs> right? We talked about this. Um, Jeff Bacaris from Altoona and Brad Coyne, who we had on our show that did Running with the Bulls. I think they would be. But the fun, the greatest part about the Barkley Marathons this year is that this was the first year that a woman completed all five loops of the Barkley Marathons. Because usually only like, and usually only like one or two people complete it. And if you finish the loop in a certain amount of time, you can rest. So if you finish it in a time, you, so some people do come and they like take little power naps and stuff. But um, so anyway, just that was a fun fact. Well, we do have a text. Look up. Yeah. yeah. Say, okay. Sebastian, a.k.a. 12U Dinger King. <laughs> That's a great name. Texted in and said, did the race two years ago. Woohoo! Crazy fun, but rough on body. So we want to know, did you come finish it? I don't want to know because oh. I want to have him on the show and we need to talk about this. Oh, all right. Well, there you go. You got an invite right? to come into the studio <laughs> and chat about your experience. I want to, I have been interested in the Barkley Marathons, not for myself, but like I <clears> watched this documentary, like it was probably like 10 years ago now that I've, known about this race and i've never known anyone that's actually done it before so i want well, to talk about that now you know somebody right so we got so, your number we'll we'll shoot you a text see if we can get you in into the studio i would love that because it's just so weird everything about this race is just wild um so that's that was just kind of what i wanted to talk to people about do a little research on the barkley marathons and there's all and the the uh, mantra that I say is there's always someone crazier, right? You think you're doing something crazy? There's always someone crazier. Always. I think Barkley Marathoners are the crazy. So. Well, yeah, when there's only, you said, what, 17 people? Yeah, that's completed it. And I mean, it's still a, it's still a, some people don't even set out to complete all of it. They just, just want to see how far they can go. How did, many um, loops they can do. Did our, uh, did Joe Fleming from our, Meadow Lane, did he do that? Last I don't year? know what he did something crazy in the woods in Tennessee. So you'll have to ask him. I will, <laughs> but I he was it was outdoors. He was, yes, he did something. Was in, it in March or April? Because that's when it is. He's usually in April, but it was early this year. I can't remember. It was last year. He did something out in the woods somewhere hmm. in the middle of the night. I know that. So he he might have done that. That'd be the worst part. You have, have to, to do it in the middle of the night. <laughs> you're just you're constantly doing it. Like you're just you know. But like the start time, you don't know when. No, you don't know when the and start then like, time. You could is. just be like two a.m. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. It'd be so hard to prepare for something like that because that's a grueling journey, and you don't have a I know. set time where it's like, okay, if I do this, this, and this, yeah. I will be ready because this is like you said. And I mean, anyone who's any, yeah, you have twelve hours. Anyone who has, um, done a marathon, even half marathon, the preparation that goes into it, that you got to make sure you have all your your gels and your fuel and your electrolytes well, and all or that like stuff. Well, like doing a triathlon is yeah. kind of more what I think because yeah. you need more stuff and your <clears throat> bike this says, gear and swim gear and all that stuff. The, another fun fact, it says runners have to negotiate 12,000 feet of elevation gain with each loop, which if you complete the entire five loops, that is the equivalent of climbing up and down Mount Everest twice. Mm. <laughs> that's insane that is crazy i love that so it says each loop is run clockwise during the day and counterclockwise at night so i guess even if you started at night you so still each have to loop start 26.2 miles i don't know it's 100 miles total oh oh yeah so it's 100 so ish and constant yeah. elevation changes mm. And terrain. Well, the pictures and... I'm looking at, like people are literally grabbing up trees to oh, yeah. try to continue up on it's the trail. Not like, like it's not a like a run. trail. <laughs> yeah, it's not a run. It's not a race. I mean, they, it's not even called that. It's Barkley Marathons, but 
Um, I don't know. So if that's something that you want to look into, just I think I, you can probably still find that. Um, well, Sean says he's in. What'd you say it cost to sign up? Dollar sixty $1. or some ridiculous <laughs> yeah. thing. I don't know what the uh, it's some crazy thing. I don't know what you have to do to like qualify to get in there, but I have a feeling it's not very. They, they're um, they're probably not a million applicants where they're like <laughs> yeah like they're applying to be on Survivor and they're like oh we need sixteen people that we're just gonna pick out they're yeah no like, you have come to on down. there is a oh you do have to write an essay a persuasive essay you do have to have ultra running experience which ultra running I mean a marathon's twenty six miles a lot of ultras are like thirty miles not to say that that's not amazing but like if you're a marathon runner you could call yourself an ultra runner by running. 30 a 30 mile race instead of a 26.2 mile race i still don't want to do eight either of those persistence continued application enhances one chance uh one's chances so you better get started if he's wanting to do this but so anyway just look it up google it you can see what the entry is but just want to talk about that because again we had our first woman finisher yeah, ever that's awesome uh there was a gal that did four loops um and I think she, the gal that finished this time, she like barely made it. It was like really close. I can't remember, but hmm. maybe I'll try to look it up real quick. Yeah, I can't wait. I think I'd be crawling across the finish line if I came they anywhere are. close to finishing. Yeah, no, or one lo just one loop. I don't even. I, don't think I could do one. <laughs> <I don't think laughs> that's, I, a, that's a lot. Oh, I definitely could not do one loop. But so I just want to talk about that because that was interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're going to go to break here. Yep. Uh, Brandy went to the wrong station. Um, <laughs> She's at the old one. So she'll be here soon. <laughs> yep. But Across the, the target. But, but the scholars yeah. are here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so she went to the wrong place. But I two, think she'll be here. In yeah, time. She'll be here. It'll she be really close. Us, so, yeah. All right. So we'll be right back here. Stay with us. 93.7 The Ticket on the Fitness Fanatics. On the block with Strick and Austin. Now to tie it back to Nebraska men's basketball. This group has a chance to do something that hasn't been done before. Yeah, You know, in making a run in the Big Ten tournament, a serious run, in winning the first NCAA tournament game, but they're not going to get there by doing the same things they've always done. It is on this team to step up and change that narrative. It won't change on its well, own. Teams won't lay over for you, and that's the mindset well, shift we haven't consistently seen. Yet. Weekdays from 2 to 4 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. A lot of work goes into making Nebraska, Nebraska. Keeping it green. Helping it thrive making it fun. Everything that goes into caring for our outdoors, from waters to wildlife, plays a big role in making Nebraska home. Learn how we help conserve our state's natural resources at OutdoorNebraska.org. Paid for by Nebraska Game and Parks, aired with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. This is your captain. We are going to be experiencing some slight turbulence. Please fasten your... Oh, hold on. Just got a video of my cat. Imagine the pilot of an airplane was as confident as you are texting and driving. Seems kind of crazy when you put it like that. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. If you can plan barbecues and weddings, you can plan to protect yourself from a natural disaster. Sign up for local alerts, prepare an emergency kit, and make a family communications plan. Get started at ready.gov slash plan. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Pastor Tom. Did you know there's a place kids can seek out help when they're away from home and something goes wrong? They find themselves in a difficult spot or even a dangerous situation. Maybe another child is bullying them or a stranger is following them. Perhaps on a date and things just go bad. In Lincoln, here's where they can find help. It's called Safe Place. Safe Place is a national program for children taking place in thousands of cities across the United States. The People City Mission is sponsoring this program in our community and has set up a number of businesses, fire stations, schools, 
and nonprofits around the city to become safe locations where kids can seek out help. They just need to look for the big yellow sign that says safe place on it. Then go inside and ask for help. We will be quickly connected to them and ensure they make it back home or to whatever resources are needed. If you'd like to find out more about Safe Place and ways in which you can get involved, just go to PCMLincoln.org. Remember, when we all do a little, we change a lot. You never think cancer will happen to you. I smoked for over 40 years. My doctor recommended that I get annual lung cancer screening. They were able to catch my cancer at stage one. It's never too late to quit. Even if you're still smoking, you need to ask your doctor about annual lung cancer screening. Just 30 minutes a year could save your life. Call the Nebraska Tobacco Quit Line. 1-800-QUIT-NOW. 1-800-784-8669. Paid for by Tobacco Free Nebraska. Aired with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. I think it's just vapor. Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? One vape pod has as much nicotine as one pack of cigarettes. My kid? My kid, My kid knows it's dangerous. 5.4 million American kids vape, and most think it's harmless. Get your head out of the cloud. Talk to your kid about vaping. Visit talkaboutvaping.org. That's talkaboutvaping.org. Brought to you by the American Lung Association and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Pastor Tom. Did you know there's a place kids can seek out help when they're away from home and something goes wrong? They find themselves in a difficult spot or even a dangerous situation. Maybe another child is bullying them or a stranger is following them. Perhaps on a date and things just go bad. In Lincoln, here's where they can find help. It's called Safe Place. Safe Place is a national program for children taking place in thousands of cities across the United States. The People City Mission is sponsoring this program in our community and has set up a number of businesses, fire stations, schools, and nonprofits around the city to become safe locations where kids can seek out help. They just need to look for the big yellow sign that says safe place on it. Then go inside and ask for help. We will be quickly connected to them and ensure they make it back home or to whatever resources are needed. If you'd like to find out more about Safe Place and ways in which you can get involved, just go to PCMLincoln.org. Remember, when we all do a little, we change a lot. Old School with DP and J. Do you think it's too early to talk about Patrick Mahomes as the greatest of all time? You know, to be honest with you, I think he might be on ahead of the pace. It was definitely on on pace, maybe ahead of the pace. I think right now everything that he does is going to get over overblown, and I think people <laughs> so quickly forgot the 20-year run of the Patriots. Not five, six years. 20-year run of Tom Brady and the Patriots. A uh, 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Early break with Sip and Jake. We do not go quietly in the night on early break. Um, we don't and we won't. <laughs> Is that our motto now? A- <laughs> Is that our show motto? <laughs> <laughs> we let you have that moment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We won't. We won't. We, we don't. We, and, and we, we won't. won't. <laughs> <laughs> we, it's our new one. Yeah, I'm getting a t-shirt. I want but we don't go quietly in yeah, the night. We voice missed. early break with Sip and Jake from 6 to 8 every weekday morning on 93.7 The Ticket. Now back to Fitness Fanatics on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. All right, welcome in back to the studios where we have total chaos in Jeff, here. Help her get what? her headset. All right. Jeff can't do two things at once. It's a whole thing. It's, it's, like look, it's not you. Oh, okay. okay. So poor Eliana's Wait, not even gonna know how right. she sounds. Yep. Okay. She's just gonna wing it's it. It's okay. We'll figure it out for next time. We're all figuring out headsets. They're like Rubik's cubes, but we got it. Yeah. All right. Well, we have a full house here in the studios. We are joined by Brandy Benson. She works at Lincoln Southwest. So tell us a little about yourself, Brandy. I thought you were going to say she comes to Farrell's sometimes. Once a month. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I have been at Lincoln Southwest for um, 11 years. I do um, all of our journalism things there and also all of our unified activities. And so for those who don't know, Unified Activities partner students with and without disabilities to participate in a variety of events. Um, We have been very fortunate to have an amazing staff and an amazing student body um, that has fully embraced the idea of how do we make schools more inclusive so that all students of all abilities 
can be able to participate in as many things as possible. Um, and so I brought two of the best of the best to talk a little bit about that today. All right. So, and who do we have in here, Brandy? Oh, right. Me. I thought you were looking at Nicole. <laughs> no. um, do you guys want to introduce Sorry, yourselves? <laughs> so, okay. Talk um, about your, maybe talk about um, who you are, things you do that are not unified and things yes. you do that are unified. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my name is Eliana Witt. I'm a junior at Lincoln Southwest High School. And so I guess outside of unified, I do, um, I'm on the leadership team for our future business educators of America. And then I also do Educators Rising for Southwest, and I also do the Career Academy, which is like a separate focus program for, I do K through 12 education, so I get to get a jump start on my classes um, for my college education and um, get a jump start so I can start my career earlier. Um, so I guess for TCA right now, I am doing practicum teaching at, um, Adams Elementary, so I'm in their special education room, and I just help out where needed, um, which is super fun and really allows me to see like what I want to do in my future. Um, and then I'm also just taking two other college courses with that. Um, at Southwest, I also <coughs> do. <laughs> uh, what unified thing? Oh, I just did a council. Okay. Oh, okay. I just did a council. Yes. Um, she never shows up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then I guess they do unified. So I do unified everything. So unified council where we plan clubs, um, just talk about different everything unified, um, make posters for around the school. And then I do unified book club, which is where we um, – we read a book with one of our partners with a disability, and then we also do a craft with them um, that can connect to the book or just like a random craft, which is always fun. And then we do Unify Club where we do a craft um, or just an activity um, for like once a month um, just to get everybody together. And then I do Unified Bowling. So we're in <laughs> teams. Um, there's like three athletes and three partners and we just rotate bowling super fun and then unified track new one this year for you yes <laughs> yes <laughs> um where we do different track events we do the 100 the four by one shot put and long jump and then what classes do you do they're unified oh do unified choir where um we learn different songs and different activities that gets everybody to learn more about music um, and just have fun. We have a concert every term um, where we showcase our songs to the parents. Um, and then, so that's like half a period or whatever. And then the next period, um, I do Unified Yearbook where there's about four partners and then four athletes and we create a mini yearbook just showcasing different unified activities or different things that we think are important or um, or some of our favorites. Um, and we just talk about unified and talk about our favorite things. So that's super fun. And then do unified PE, um, <laughs> which is um, we just do different fun games and physical activities, just get everybody moving and having fun together. Now you're a junior, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. So as I'm listening to all this stuff, I know. and we kind of have a, you know, the, the saying, the average Joe, well, it's average Jeff on the show. Cause I don't know <laughs> anything. In fact, we went to the Wisconsin basketball game a year ago and they had a unified game yep. at halftime. Yeah. I had no clue what that meant. Mm -hmm. Like zero. I didn't, I was like, I had no idea what unified what so this is the average. I just don't right. didn't know. So right. this is all fascinating to me. But as I was listening to everything you're involved in as a junior, I was going back to my junior year yeah. in high school. And <laughs> when I was a junior in high school, the number one thing on my mind was how many games will Nebraska win in 1994? <laughs> I thought like, you were that's say, like, like, all that I, FFA. All that I, like that. No. No, no. Marching band. Marching band. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you do as a junior? I was in marching band. 
And then I was watching Nebraska football. That's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if, if if you're out there listening, thinking, gosh, what was I doing as a junior high school? Definitely not as much I'm thinking as you're about doing. What yeah. Ben is doing, our son, who's a junior, he needs to step it up yeah, right. crying out loud. Wow. And you volunteer for Down to Box, too, on Saturdays yeah. with us. So we'll talk about more, more about that later, too. All right, Mac, what wow. about you? What you got? Okay, I'm McKenna Murphy, and I'm a senior at Southwest High School. And next year, I plan to go to UNL and major in secondary special education with a minor in Spanish. And at Southwest, I am in Spanish Honors Society, which is a selected group of students who show proficiency in the language and um, are dedicated to promote the culture. Eliana said that, too. She just yeah, said it. I forgot. <laughs> um, but aside from that, I am in National Honors Society, which you get elected as a junior and then participated in it your senior year. Eliana's also <laughs> in that. She just didn't say it. Um, it's hard to remember. She was, yeah. trying, she was trying to play it down. It's she hard ran, to remember 50 things. That she ran she out of fingers and toes <laughs> to count on. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> National Honor Society um, really just showcases students who are dedicated to their academics and like showing civic responsibility and all those sorts of things. And so we have volunteer projects and community service projects each term. And we have to have so many service hours to keep ourselves active in the organization. Um, uh, I don't know what else I do. What unified things do you do? What, what unified things do I do? I also do all the unified things, um, mm -hmm. both sports, PE and, or nope, no. bowling <laughs> no. and track. Both classes, PE and choir. I do Unified Club, Unified Book Club, and Unified Council, where I act as the president this year, which has been such an amazing opportunity to be able to oversee everything that we do and make sure that our unified members and partners are really living up to the idea of what it means to be unified. So that's been an amazing experience this year. And um, talk about Unified Family Night real fast. Oh, Unified Family Night is a good one because it's outside of school hours. So you're not missing class. You're not having to get pulled out or anything. Um, we invite all families um, in our Unified programs. And if anyone brings other friends, other family, that is always amazing. We have one family night um, each term. So we have four a year. And Typically, we do things like scavenger hunts or bingo. We'll watch movies and we always have snacks. That's one thing about always. us. We will always have snacks. <laughs> and everything. So that's honestly, I feel like Unified Family Night's an underrated activity. Like no one, no one really one. hypes it up as one. much as they should. But yeah. yeah, it is a good one. Um, So why Unified, guys? What... Like what drew you to it? What keeps you in it? Why is it important? Do you want to go or do you want me to go? We'll go. Okay. So <laughs> I didn't join Unified until my sophomore year. And it was also towards the end of the year. Um, one of the co-teachers for the class Unified PE is one of our really good family friends. And um, she recommended that I do Unified PE. And before that, I had never heard of it, didn't know what Unified was. And then I joined Unified PE second semester of my sophomore year. And I mean, it was ultimately the best thing and best decision that I've ever made. Um, I instantly just made so many friends and connections and really learned what it meant to be inclusive and what it means to promote inclusivity. And since then, I have joined every unified activity and acted as the vice president and president for our unified council. And ultimately, it just, I mean, it gave me my future pathway. You know, I always knew I wanted to work with people. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And then since participating in all these unified activities, I really decided that that was what I wanted to do for my future. Okay, so my involvement in Unified started um, a little bit early. So my si older sister, she was involved in Unified, and I was like, that sounds, she did bowling, I think, mainly. And I was like, that sounds really fun. Like, 
that would be a great way for me to like make friends at a new school. Like I think that would be amazing. So I started my freshman year. I went and interviewed with Benson and Brendan. And I was super nervous. I was like, oh my gosh, like, am I going to make the team? Like, what if I don't make the team? I was like, mom, oh my God, like, what if I don't make the team? I'm going to be so disappointed. <laughs> and then I found out I made the team and I was like, yes, this is going to be so fun. So um, when we had our first, like, um, interview information meeting, I was like, I was a little nervous as usual, but um, I tried to put myself out there a little bit. Um, and so um, after that, I met a bunch of new friends through bowling. And then I was like, yeah, like, this is really fun. I'm definitely going to do this next year. And then I tried to do some, like, go to some club meetings where I could, like, stay connected with my friends when bowling wasn't in season. And then the next year, I did bowling again. And that's when I feel like I started to get out of my comfort zone a little bit. I Freshman year, I was a very, very shy girl. Like, I... I rarely talked unless I was spoken to. I was just super quiet. And then sophomore year, I really got out of my shell and I was like um, connecting with more people and making new friends and starting to really become a leader, I would say. Um, and so for sophomore year, I got more involved. I did, I started doing book club and then I did, I went to almost every single club I could. And then I did PE. I also did choir um so that's really where I got involved and I was like this is super fun and then so my when my junior year came around I was like I'm gonna be involved in every single thing I can so I joined council I did yearbook I did all of the things and it's definitely like made my high school career um it's shown me like I don't always knew I wanted to be an educator from having two parent educators I was like this is what I want to do um so then uh, <laughs> sorry no, sorry. <laughs> um, so that's why I went to the Career Academy for K-12 education. And I was like, I think I want to do special education. But then like through that, I realized like I want to do speech pathology. So Unified has really helped me to like figure out my future career and also just like make a bunch of new connections and create an environment that's welcoming to everybody, which is super important. All right. Yeah. Well, we need to go to break. Yep. So stay with us. We'll be right back on 93.7 The Ticket. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. I could write a commercial telling you how great waffle weekends are at the chocolate season. Or I could just have Rico read you the menu. Banana Nutella. Nutella topped Belgian waffle with homemade whipped cream, chocolate chips, and freshly sliced bananas. Baconator. Buttermilk waffle with bacon slices tucked inside. Topped with salted whipped butter, caramelized pecans, and pure maple syrup. Waffle weekend brunches at the chocolate season. PB&J. 40th and Old Genie or online at thechocolateseason.com. If you came across someone struggling with hunger, how would you recognize them? By their clothes? Their age? the way they speak? Would you notice a 16-year-old boy, boy who got, got his first, first job, job, not for extra spending money, but to help feed his little sisters? Or a mother who's in between jobs and sometimes goes to bed hungry so her kids can have dinner? Or a 14-year-old girl who signs up to every after-school activity not to make friends, but just to get something to eat? Or a retiree who fell ill and had to choose between getting medicine or groceries? I am the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. People you pass by every day but never knew were hungry. I am hunger in America. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America, 200 Food Bank Strong, and the Ad Council. You're spending $300 a month 
Binge drinking is the most common form of excessive drinking, which costs the United States more than $191 billion each year. By drinking less, you will save $300 a month. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. Introducing the outlet by Sarter Heyman. The outlet brings you luxurious Sarter Heyman quality jewelry at unbeatable prices. Shop our expansive inventory of overstocked merchandise and a vast estate collection that just hasn't found its home yet. This is your chance to own stunning designer jewelry at a fraction of the cost. Elevate your style at the outlet by Sarter Heyman, where luxury and affordability meet. Downtown at 12th and O or online at SarterHeyman.com. I think it's just vapor. Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? One vape pod has as much nicotine as one pack of cigarettes. My kid? My kid kid knows it's dangerous. 5.4 million American kids vape, and most think it's harmless. Get your head out of the cloud. Talk to your kid about vaping. Visit talkaboutvaping.org. That's talkaboutvaping.org. Brought to you by the American Lung Association and the Ad Council. At Fairway Meat Market, your family, and as part of the family, they want to save you money on your meat and groceries. Now, through March 24th, enjoy Lincoln's favorite 8-ounce bacon-wrapped sirloin or 4-ounce fresh salmon portions for $3.99 each. Get ahead for your Easter dinner with Fairway Pit hams, fresh lamb roast, or ribeye roast. That's all at Fairway Meat Market in the Rockledge Square Shopping Center, just south of 84th and Van Dorn. Houses? They're expensive. And once you buy one, you're kind of stuck with it for a while. You need to make sure you get your best house for the best price. You need Ben Bleicher and his team of pros at Professional Realty Group. They'll take the time to figure out what's important for you in your dream home, and they have the expertise to find the hidden issues that could surprise you after the sale. That's professional knowledge, proactive service. We call that potential. Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Service Ambassador. Find more online at prg-ne.com. This is Brad with Midwest Bank, proudly serving our Nebraska communities for over 70 years. We're a community bank, making local decisions, supporting local organizations, and helping local businesses and farms succeed. We are dedicated to serving our clients and helping them meet their financial needs with sound, innovative banking solutions. From an array of checking and deposit accounts, cash management services, to small business, real estate, and ag lending. We're here for you, your community, your bank, Midwest Bank. Find out more at MidwestBank.com. Member FDIC. Now back to Fitness Fanatics on 937 a ticket and the ticketfm.com. We're on. All right, welcome back in. We just have a few minutes here before we get to the top of the hour. Um we couldn't decide what to talk about for this last segment. No, so. I got it. All right, like, Brandy. Was, okay. <laughs> okay, so and also if anyone has any questions for us. Yes, yeah. if you have any questions, These, you can text I mean, us. this is this is yeah. the cream of the crop to ask mm-hmm. questions. Yeah. Yes, any questions, you can text us 402-464-5685 on the Starter Heyman text line or hit us up on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, or just all, or Allo. You can watch us on television. Oh, I didn't know that. Annal. Annal. Allo. Channel, channel. 961 <laughs> and we're also on what amazon prime prime video i mean we're just we're everywhere these guys are gonna start so, panicking yes. you told them they're on tv <laughs> i mean millions i would have yeah. looked cuter okay guys quick <laughs> 30 seconds each at the beginning of every unified bowling match um we do the special olympics pledge which is let me win but if, but if I, I cannot win, win let, let me be brave, brave in the attempt. attempt why is that important 30 seconds. Okay. Well, um, Unified's not all about winning. Yes, we all love to win, obviously. But um, it's it's about more about like being included, including everybody, and just making others um, feel included and just like having fun with each other. And if winning happens along the way, then it does. But that's not what it's all about. It's about um, just like making connections and having fun. Um, so, yeah. Um, I totally agree. The one thing I would add is that when you're working with students with disabilities, you come across so many different personalities. And 
like while working with students with disabilities is so amazing you know there's highs and lows and especially when it comes to our unified sports um when an athlete like performs bad in their bowling or like their certain track event you know depending on like the moment or who it is like they might get upset and the thing about the special olympics mission statement um like we're just able to remind our athletes that you know like we're not here solely to win like obviously that's amazing if we do because it shows our hard work but we're here to learn how to deal with like the aspect of losing or just making friends and those kind of things so it's not always about winning that was so, good yep that was Great. good and I kind of want to talk about that in the next session too, or next session. Next session. Too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. We're a hot we're, mess in here. We're intimidated now. Okay. We don't oh, know. We, I mean, this is probably <laughs> the two most intelligent people right, that have, I know, like, that have I ever just, been on this like, show in two years. Just like watching them. <laughs> I like, know. Well, I don't know. What, but I do want to talk about that. I'm like, I work with you every day. You're so good at this. Yeah. About like the biggest rewards and the biggest challenges. Yes. I think that's something we can talk about in the next segment, but. We'll go ahead and head to break right now and then. Yep. Top of the hour. Yeah. We'll we'll get all into the unified program at Lincoln Southwest. So stay with us on 93.7 The Ticket Fitness For Fanatics. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. When you're high, you feel different. You think different, you talk different, you draw different, you listen to music different, but you probably knew that. Problem is, you also drive different and not in a good way. That's why driving high is illegal everywhere. So if you're high, just don't drive. Make a plan to get a sober ride. Because if you feel different, you drive different. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. Online.com inviting you to join us here on 93.7 The Ticket every Saturday morning now in our new time. We're on from 8 to 9 with the weekly Husker Online radio show. We'll give you the latest in recruiting. We'll talk about what's going on with both football, basketball, and we'll probably share a few stories from the inside. It's every Saturday morning right here on 93.7 The Ticket. It's the Husker Online radio show from 8 to 9 a.m. Old school with DP and J. Do you think it's too early to talk about Patrick Mahomes as the greatest of all time. You know, to be honest with you, I think he might be on ahead of the pace. It was definitely on on pace, maybe ahead of the pace. I think right now everything that he does is gonna get over overblown. And I think people <laughs> so quickly forgot the 20 year run of the Patriots. Not five, six years, 20 year run of Tom Brady and the Patriots. On uh, 937 the ticket and the ticketfm.com. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. Serve Nebraska believes that volunteers are part of what makes Nebraska great. Each year, the Step Forward Awards honors volunteers from across the state who serve their communities in outstanding ways. We hope you'll join us this year at the Step Forward Awards Luncheon on October 27th in Omaha. Help us thank volunteers with a celebration to remember. To register, visit serve.nebraska.gov and click register now. We hope to see you there. Paid for by Serve Nebraska aired with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. Reading may be the most valuable skill your child will ever learn. And research proves that when children read outside the classroom, they do much better in school. I'm Jenny Benson, president of the Nebraska State Education Association. It's easy to picture yourself reading with a young child curled up in your lap, but don't forget about your older children. 
they also need encouragement to read. So set aside some time to read together and help your child achieve and succeed. Sponsored by the Nebraska State Education Association, aired by the Nebraska Broadcasters Association in this station. Alexa, play 93.7 The Ticket. Okay, playing 93.7 The Ticket. Alexa, turn down the lights. Dimming the lights. Alexa, order a pizza. The big one. All the toppings. Are you sure that's a good idea? Alexa. That's a lot of pizza for just one man. Alexa, just do it. Stop judging me, just do it. As you wish. Thanks, Alexa. You're my best friend. My early Alzheimer's diagnosis was hard to take. But it gave my mom and me more time to plan together. Talk to your family about seeing a doctor. Go to alz.org slash time to talk. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM for 93.7 The Ticket. Welcome into Fitness Fanatics on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Now here are your hosts, Jeff and Nicole Essig. All right, welcome back in to the Fitness Fanatics. If you missed any part of the show, you can check us out on any podcast platforms. We're also on the ticketfm.com under Ticket Weekends show. We are sponsored by Integrative Life Choices. ILC is hiring direct support professionals all over the state of Nebraska, full-time, part-time days, evenings, and weekends. If you're interested, you can apply at ilc.net backslash careers. Direct support professionals work to ensure a meaningful life for the people they support. They work to support people in achieving their hopes and dreams. So big shout out to Becky Maraski and ILC for their support. All right. So we're going to get into it. We'll start with you, Brandy. Kind of. Yeah, a, no, hold on. Because oh, we had oh. a message on Facebook. All right. We got some messages. Oh, yeah. Right. We better do those first. Beth commented on Facebook and said, as a mama with a special needs kid, I want to say the biggest thank you for making so many parents dreams come true. Having friendships and playing sports are hard things at times. And the little two heart emoji. So, yes. All right. That's Good. It. That was it. Just one. All right. To Brandy. Put that shout out there. Yes. Thanks, Beth. Wanna, yeah. Thanks, Beth. Yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you for comment. trusting us um, to do a sport and participate um, with your children because I know it's difficult sometimes to be a parent and just trust the people who are trying to help your students succeed. So, Thank and you Beth for doing has that. been yeah. on our show before, oh, okay. and she also um, is a big leader in girls wrestling too. So yeah, good yes. company. Yes, with mm-hmm. everything creating spaces for kids. Mm-hmm. That's what it's all about. Yep. So okay. All right. All right, Jeff. Yeah. Ready? You're up. So just uh, give us give us a little background on you. How did you get involved um, with Unified, and why is it one of your passions? So I um, grew up in a small town in Wyoming, and obviously this was years and years ago. Um, And so I don't know if our school was set up the way it was um, because things have evolved or if it was because we were a small town. Um, But myself and my sisters, uh, the school that we went to, the elementary school, middle schools, high schools, we didn't really have like a specialized special education department per se. So students were with students. Um, And then students would get called out to do like OT or PT or different things that they needed, but we were all together all the time. Um, and so we learned from a very young age to just interact with everybody. Um, it didn't matter your ability, you just did. And so, um, I remember a girl in my class, um, who was nonverbal and we, we learned to understand her because we were with her every day. Um, I remember my younger sister getting invited to a good friend of hers um, birthday party because she would help him around school with his wheelchair. Um, And so it just wasn't uncommon for us to just be with kids. Mm -hmm. And so when I got my job at Lincoln Southwest, I was incredibly fortunate and blessed to have my classroom be right across the hall from our life skills classroom. Um, And so I got to know our students that were in there. um, And then I also got to know more about um, we have two incredible humans at our school, um, Lynn Strack and Liz Brendan, who created the Special Olympics program that we had at Southwest um, and also Adaptive PE. And so Adaptive PE was before Unified PE, and it was for 
um, special education students to get their PE credits, but it was very limited partner support. And so a couple years in, um, I was approached about helping coach unified bowling, which was the first sport that we did. And so I was fortunate enough to um, start that program with, at the time, our school resource officer, Joe Fisher, which was kind of fun because he was a police officer in our building, but once a week he got to wear like a bowling shirt and come to bowling stuff with us. Um, and then when he, um, his time was up at Southwest, coach Brendan and I and coach Strat got together and we decided to do unified bowling together. And around that time, they had been piloting a unified PE class for the district to try and implement it out and make sure it worked. And the, the premise was we're going to have equal amounts of general and special education students, and they're going to partner together just like we do in our unified sports. And so that just kind of snowballed um, over the last seven, eight years. So we started with, like I said, adaptive PE, special Olympics, um, and that turned into adding unified bowling, turned into adding unified PE, which now is in all of the high school and middle schools in Lincoln. Um, and then that turned into um, adding unified track. And then students are the ones who were like, we need more, we need more things. Um, and I'm an avid believer that they know what they're doing. Um, and if you give them a platform, they'll take it and run with it. So they're the reason that at Southwest, we have unified club, unified council, um, unified, um, family night. Uh, then we implemented unified choir, which is now in middle schools, um, we've also added some other inclusive things. So we have inclusive cheer and inclusive swimming for other participants to take place in. Um, and then I also want to back up a smidge because before my time at Southwest, um, our life skills teachers who are also incredible, um, Amy Jewell and Patty Brown, they, they had friendship club and friendship club, um, was a club that again, partnered students with and without disabilities. And then when COVID hit that kind of went away. And so they had that going for a number of years at Southwest. And then once COVID was over and we kind of started to pick up momentum with Unified, mm -hmm. we rebranded Friendship Club to be Unified Club so that we had consistency with all of the pieces. Um, and so now I think we've done, we've counted before, we have 11 mm -hmm. or 12 different yeah. um, Unified and Inclusive opportunities at Southwest um, with, I mean, no plans of stopping. You know, someone will come forward and say, I want to unify this. Um, and we say, okay, you need to come up with a plan. You need to come up with how that's going to look, how that's going to be structured. What do we need? What resources do we need? And then we just go with it. Um, and I, I, you know, I would like to take credit for it, but again, our building is amazing. Um, if we didn't have the staff that we have, we wouldn't be able to have book club because book club is the second Wednesday of the month during second block. So from about 10 to 11, uh, unified club is the third Thursday of the month. And it's during fourth block from two fifteen to three, four or two fifteen to two forty five. Um, and if we didn't have people supporting our program, we wouldn't be able to do that during the school day. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, like I said, we are very fortunate <laughs> to have the staff and then the students create it all. They're, they're the reason we have everything we have. Where did like unified come <laughs> from? Like, excuse me, was that, is that a national thing or like, how did that so it so it partners with Special Olympics, okay. um, and so everybody's familiar with Special Olympics. Mm -hmm. That's something that's been around for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a separate piece from schools. So you can do Special Olympics, but it's not integrated into your school. Um, students practice in it in school, and they have competitions held in schools and stuff like that. But it's not a, an affiliate, I guess you could say, like the other sports are. And so. I can't really speak around the country. I know other places have, have implemented unified, but here specifically in Nebraska, um, the reason that we call it unified and what makes something a unified sport is they partner with the NSAA. So the Nebraska, um, school activities association, and, um, it is listed as a varsity sport. So it is a sport that our, um, athletes and partners will letter just like you would letter if you're a varsity football athlete, just like you would letter if you're, um, a varsity traditional track athlete, um, unified bowling and unified track are two sports that are recognized by the NSAA. They have, um, school competitions. They culminate at the end of the year with districts and state. Um, and so that's what makes it unified. Is it something that all of the schools have in place, um, for a sport? That's cool. Yeah. 
It really mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's different from because with Special Olympics, the Special Olympic that Olympic athletes aren't partnered right. with mm-hmm. someone else, right? right. Yeah. Yes. So you have people. Um, I mean, you work together. Yeah. Uh, but what makes Unified really cool is it it really recognizes and embraces your entire school environment. Mm-hmm. So in bowling, um, like these guys said, you are on a team of five or six people, and we do what's called the Baker style format. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I certainly wasn't. Women's bowling. Um, I, women's bowling. I I I I have no experience with bowling. Um, and so, uh, but what it does is every game you alternate bowling frames. So, um, your athlete will bowl one, four, seven, and 10, and then your partners will do two, three, five, six, eight, nine. And then those scores are compiled at the end. And then we bowl six games and your total score at the end, all of our scores are added up and whichever team has the most points, um, is the winner. And then the same thing in track. Um, if Eliana and I are partnered together in long jump, um, I'm the athlete. Eliana is the partner. If I jump five feet, she jumps five feet. Our score is combined to be 10 feet. So we have a total jump of 10 feet. So it really embraces the idea of we're doing this as a team and we're doing this together. So what, um, let's get to you two. Yeah. Eliana, what's your favorite unified sport or activity or activity that you Mm. do? And then give us like a little story, like a, like one shining moment, one sh- something. Well, one happened. shining moment, like you it's applicable yes. it's March Madness. Yes, like you bowled a two fifty <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> Eliana bowled a two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's over ten games. I mean. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't, can't really pick and choose like my favorite one, but oh, um. I would just have to say bowling because that's the one that like really got me into all things unified. So, um, let me think of a story. <laughs> okay. So last year, um, I was on a team with one of our athletes. Um, can I name drop? No. Okay. Okay. So I was on a team <laughs> with one of our athletes and she's very outgoing and, um, she's super loud and, she gets super excited whenever we um win or like get a strike or a spare so we always had to come up with oh lord <laughs> <laughs> with super like um like energetic cheers um that really gets everybody excited um they do that in bowling though we've been to a college match yeah. and they do that they do they have, we're you know. a bit much well, it gets, um, it gets, it gets yeah. rowdy yeah. yeah so our <laughs> Again, our premise is fun yeah. and creating spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know nothing about bowling. What what do I tell you guys when you bowl crooked, dude? And you're the, the only the and only the, and you're the, the only you're the bowling thing coach. I, yeah, the only thing I, I I know to say to help you. What do I say? <laughs> Take your arm straight, straight back, back and straight <laughs> forward. <laughs> I don't know anything else. Um, Maybe so, Jeff, you should come in and help. Yeah, you know. So our etiquette, you know, we don't. Tips. We're not very good at waiting if someone's bowling. We're not very okay. good at being quiet. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, Eliana's team was a bit loud. Do you want to do your cheer that you guys did? Should I do mine from last year or this year? It's up to you. Well, I do this year. This year's good. <laughs> she can't hear do you last year. she's wearing. Last year. Okay. Yeah. So last year was, we had like a little roll of the arm. We were like, Aruba, strike, strike, Aruba, strike, strike. And then this year was, was it really pink it was something with pink delicious. No, that wasn't mine. Oh, okay. Uh, then I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Know. okay. okay. It, it was when a good one. It was a good okay. One. Mac, um, favorite moment? That's the thing. Like, I don't know if I could really pick a favorite moment. I think my favorite activity is probably unified PE because it's probably our largest activity that we have. I mean, we oftentimes we are outnumbered like both ways, partners to athletes, athletes to partners. Um, I mean, we have, don't, I feel like we have around 50 people, um, give or take. And I just think unified PE is definitely a great activity because there's just, there is just so many people Mm -hmm. and you get to meet so many new people. And, you know, that's the whole thing about unified is creating relationships. Um, 
but I think it it definitely happens a lot within PE. And so that's probably my favorite activity. And I think what's really cool about Unified PE too, so I got to sub um, a couple of weeks ago because um, our other, we have two Unified PE teachers and one of them was out on maternity leave. And so I got to be the extra body. And what I love about Unified, and I, I, I remember thinking this watching PE is just, Anything can be modified and adapted for any ability. It just requires you to think of how you can serve that individual. Um, And you just need people willing, which again, like I said, our success is not because of the three of us. We play a part in it, but all of us are into this idea of we want somebody who wants to be able to do this to do this. And we we're going to find a way to make it happen. And the other big piece of that too, you know, that kind of goes along with that is just because somebody's qualified to do it doesn't mean they have to do it. And so I think that's a misconception a lot too is, oh, we created this bowling team. Everybody should bowl. Um, And we had a student a couple of years ago who hated the bowling alley sounds. They were just too loud for her Mm -hmm. Um, and she didn't want to do it. And so again, like just because the opportunity is there doesn't mean we need to make people be doing it, which is why it's important to have so many different opportunities um, so that students get to choose what they want to participate in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. So what are some of the biggest challenges that you guys encounter uh, with your unified pro- uh, activities? I think it's a challenge and a reward at the same time mm-hmm. when you come across all these different personalities. And I know I mentioned that before, mm-hmm. but it really is true because you know, you'll have kids who will just talk your ear off and never stop. And sometimes it's the best thing ever, but sometimes it's like, all right, we got to take it down a notch. Okay. And, you know, that's, what's great about Unified is all the different kinds of people you get to work with. And it's so amazing to get to experience that. But at the same time, it's like, you have to figure out what works to keep those students with disabilities on the rails, you know, like Mm -hmm. When we have Unified Council Friday mornings, um, it gets crazy. You know, it's 745 in the morning, yet somehow all those students still have energy. And I'm like, I just want to go back to sleep. I'm going to need you to quiet down just a little bit. But um, it's great and challenging at the same time that you're with so many different people, but you have to figure out what works for them because what works for one person might not work for the other. And so you really have to like, pick up on all those personalities and figure out like what suits them and their disability. Yeah, I would say something really important for being involved in Unified is being to, being able to be like adaptable and like adapt to different like uh, challenges, I guess you would say. So like sometimes in PE, like if there's a student who like is getting very frustrated with the game, um, you have to learn like what's best for them to like keep them going and like allow them to like come back to the game. But like, so um, like if there's one person who just like does not want to do the game anymore, they just don't like it. Sometimes that means giving them space and just like letting them work it out with themselves and like, like figure out how they're feeling. And then you can come back to them and be like, so what's going on? Like, how can like we get you back into the game and like keep participating? Um, or there's sometimes where like if a student is like getting super frustrated and like doesn't want to participate, you have to be there to like talk them through their feelings and like help them like understand how they're feeling or some. So it's just like kind of like learning what's best for each student and then kind of like adapting yourself and like how you're working with each student to like how you have seen that they work best in like previous like interactions and stuff. So it's just do you feel like that has help you in other aspects of school and classes and stuff like that? Do you think that has that helped you become more adaptable to just everybody yeah, in definitely. general? Because I just feel like uh, th- everybody works differently. Yeah, so we just all like, have different personalities yeah. that come out in different ways. And so just like being able, I feel like now I've been able to kind of like learn and like, I guess, focus more on how other people learn. Mm-hmm. Um, really is like been able to allow me to like see like what certain people are going to need in like certain situations and how I can help them um when needed or sometimes it's not my help isn't needed and to like learn like when it is and when it isn't Mm -hmm. I guess would be 
I think another big thing is we still have so many people who are new to Unified. And that's, I mean, that's exactly what we want. We always mm-hmm. want new people. Um, but the one thing people don't always pick up on is like how you treat the athletes. I think there's kind of this idea that because they have a disability, you need to like kind of always be nice to them and always like kind of baby them. And I see that a lot. And um, I know that we have picked up that like you don't you don't always have to be nice, you know, like you have to get stern because there are so many times where our athletes will act out and, you know, some of the things that they're doing are like part of their IEP plans like that. And they're not supposed to be doing that. They're supposed to be working on it. And like, you have to get stern and let them understand that, like, we're not messing around, like, and we're not going to take this lightly. Like, this is not something you're supposed to be doing. And if no one else is going to hold you accountable, like we'll hold you accountable because there's kind of like the stigma around like, like baby talk and all that kind of stuff. And it's frustrating to see it. But like, we just have to teach other people that, you know, like it's okay to kind of to be stern with them and to help them understand that something that they're doing is not acceptable. Like it's not always like Mr. Nice Guy, you know? Well, and I think like a big piece of that, you know, I think another piece of what we try to accomplish with Unified is just this idea of being around all kinds of people Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because students are together statistically middle school is when they start to separate into more specialized instruction. Um, and that's where we start to see these inconsistencies, um, and these relationships start to flounder because kids don't get to be kids. And that's ultimately what we want in school and sports, you know, let them be kids. Um, and I think that because of that, then we, we go into this world where adults don't know how to interact with people who are different than them. You know, I think back to, um, when we started down to box, um, and Jeff and I were having a conversation and he was like, you know, I, I just, in my day to day life, I don't have an opportunity to interact oh. with anybody, Mm-mm. um, that has down syndrome. I don't even and, think ever. Right. Like, and, and, and just this either. idea of yeah. creating this space where everybody belongs so that when we all go out into the world, everybody belongs and we can help each other. And when we see someone, we can say, do you need me to grab that door for you? Or, Mm -hmm. um, how are you today? Hi, you know, simple things that, like I said, I, I, I think it, it starts once they get older, older and they just start to separate. And then we just keep that going. And so like McKenna was talking about, you know, reintroducing kids to it's okay to tell somebody, no, you don't have Mm -hmm. to feel bad. Um, when, you know, they want to be on their cell phone and that they're not allowed to be, Mm -hmm. it's okay to say, no, that's not what we're supposed to be doing right now. But they haven't been able to do that because they haven't had the opportunity to hang out with each other anymore. We do have a a text. Um, what can individuals outside of LPS and Southwest do to promote unified sports? I think there are so many opportunities to get involved um, with the disability community, like down to box, for example, we'll talk um, about that in our next. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, I participate in an activity called the penguin project, which is through the Lincoln community playhouse. Um, we work for five straight months to put on a musical. Um, so we start in February, we go through July and, um, the amazing thing about it is it ranges, ranges from ages eight to 21. So you're working with all sorts of people from all ages, um, with and without disabilities, you get to meet so many new people and it's been an amazing experience. And then special Olympics, obviously there are so many opportunities that they have to get involved. Like not just like, you don't have to be a part of a special Olympics team. You can go and volunteer. You can go to it one time and see if you like it. There's just so many things that they offer and there's just so many other opportunities in the community and just ways to get involved. Yeah, I would say something that I do um, outside of school would be I volunteered at Morningside Adaptive Writing Therapy. So it was where we helped individuals with disabilities, either emotional or physical, um, ride horses and like learn how to ride horses because it helped with so many different like motor skills and like 
core balance. Um, so I would say like if you're wanting to get involved with like um, like different individuals, there's so many different mm-hmm. things. Like McKenna said, like you could if you're interested in theater, like you could do the Penguin Project because like there's also individuals who are interested in theater. So you're just able to like make different connections and you're able you're able to connect with like people of different ability levels with you on something that you're all interested in. Mm-hmm. And then we have boxing. So like if you're interested in boxing, like that's something that you could do to get involved in other people. Mm-hmm. Or if you like horses and riding, like that's also something you can get involved in. So there's so many different opportunities where if you're like, I'm interested in this, like there's probably something out there um, that you can get involved with individuals with different ability levels and just like do something that you both enjoy. And it's awesome. I That'd think, great do we have to wrap to yet? Or are we good? Okay. Um, I was just going to say like, I'm thinking about people who are like, well, I don't have time. Right. Mm-hmm. We, we, I get it. We're all busy. Yeah. Um, and I think like two of the biggest things that you can do to advocate for unified and for um, the disability community are to just be aware um, and to spread the word. So my spouse is also a teacher at a different district because of coming to our unified track meets and knowing unified, their district now has unified track. Mm -hmm. Their district just implemented unified PE this year. um, And they're looking to implement uh, implement other unified things. And that all came from word of mouth. And so I think Jeff, like you were saying, when you went to the halftime show and they were like, here's a unified basketball team. What is that? Mm-hmm. You know, we have enough people in it now just talking about it. Oh, you've never heard of Unified? Let me tell you what Unified is. And then even if you don't know what Unified is on an even smaller scale, I would say one of the biggest things you can do is just recognize the ways uh, in which we can be living in a more equitable society mm-hmm. for people with disabilities. Um, a lady that spoke one time to a group that I was with said, the best thing you can do for us is to always hit those wheelchair buttons on the doors because okay. you'd be surprised how many of them don't work. Mm-hmm. Um, and people just don't know that. And so mm-hmm. push it. If it doesn't work, go in and tell them your wheelchair accessible um, button is not wheelchair accessible. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, I've noticed that too, when I go into places, if I go into like a restroom and I, and I think, okay, a wheelchair couldn't be in here. Or if I go into a place to shop and I think, um, it's really loud in here. If I was somebody who had a hard time with loud noises, it would be really difficult for me to be in here. And just having a conversation about why is your music so loud Mm -hmm. (laughs) in a more polite way than Mm -hmm. that, but saying like, have you ever had anyone come in um, who has a really hard time with the music in here? Because it's just being aware we are so comfortable with uh, what we know that mm-hmm. we don't necessarily pay attention to the ways that we can help mm-hmm. um, what's different for us. I think another thing is, like you said, people may not have time, but there's like you can go out and educate yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, you can learn about appropriate behavior and learn how to advocate advocate for the disability community. Like we have um, a unified Instagram for Southwest and not only do we post like our activities that we do, but we post like appropriate language and ways to be inclusive and that kind of stuff. And there's so many resources out there that you can learn from. So even if you don't have time to actively get involved, like you can still be educating yourself and learning, you know, how can I be inclusive? What is appropriate to say and what's not? So I think that's another. All right. We're going to go to break when we come back. We'll talk about Down to Box yes. and their involvement. And that's kind of how we met these two ladies. So we'll be right back on 93.7 The Ticket, The Fitness Fanatics. Working at Continental in Lincoln isn't a job. It's a career. And right now, they've raised wages again. And they're hiring for production operators at $24.62 per hour, which grows to $28.97 per hour within three years. Skilled trade positions now start at $33.36 per hour with opportunities to make more based on certifications. Continental also has salary jobs available and great benefits, plus medical and prescription costs at very low premiums. Dental, vision, and life insurance are offered at no premium cost to the associates with increased bonuses and vacation for new hires. To learn more or apply, go to ContinentalJobs.com with keyword Lincoln. Come work at Continental today. Constructors is now hiring for all positions, with laborers starting at $23 and up based on experience. Constructors has immediate job openings for laborers, mechanics, bridge builders, operators, and drivers. Start your new career today. Constructors offers great pay, health, dental, and vision insurance, paid time off, paid holidays, and so much more. Join the crew today and be a part of Nebraska's oldest paving company dating back to 1908. 
For a complete list of openings and to apply online, visit ConstructorsLincoln.com. Alexa, play 93.7 The Ticket. Okay, playing 93.7 The Ticket. Alexa, turn down the lights. Dimming the lights. Alexa, order a pizza. The big one. All the toppings. Are you sure that's a good idea? Alexa. That's a lot of pizza for just one man. Alexa, just do it. Stop judging me, just do it. As you wish. Thanks, Alexa. You're my best friend. Start your Sundays off right with Jeff and Nicole Essink on Fitness Fanatics. Jeff and Nicole discuss health and wellness, how to achieve fitness goals, and more through the life of gym owners and gym goers. It's Fitness Fanatics from 9 to 11 a.m. on Sundays on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. If you came across someone struggling with hunger, how would you recognize them? By their clothes. Their age. The way they speak. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America, 200 Food Bank Strong, and the Ad Council. As an 18-year-old, I let my mistakes kind of take over my life. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school, and I didn't do it. Ten years later, at age 28, Jackie finished her high school diploma. When I found out that I was pregnant, I know that I had to do something for myself if I wanted to make her a better person and provide a better life for her. My family never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew what I could become and who I could become as a person. My support team is amazing. The educational director, my sister, and even my seven-year-old daughter has just been more than the support that I could ask for. I've been given an opportunity, and I'm just thankful for it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Serve Nebraska believes that volunteers are part of what makes Nebraska great. Each year, the Step Forward Awards honors volunteers from across the state who serve their communities in outstanding ways. We hope you'll join us this year at the Step Forward Awards Luncheon on October 27th in Omaha. Help us thank volunteers with a celebration to remember. To register, visit serve.nebraska.gov and click register now. We hope to see you there. Paid for by Serve Nebraska. Aired with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. Victor deployed for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. At four in the morning, my phone rang. They said, I regret to inform you that your husband was wounded in action. Victor sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. I was doing school full time, and I was also then caring for Victor. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. I just didn't want to forget that I also had goals and that I also had a life. What I did is I challenged Victor to meet me halfway. There are almost 6 million military and veteran caregivers across the nation. We have our own journey and we can fulfill that journey at the same time that we are helping our loved one. Visit aarp.org caregiving for a free military veterans guide to navigate your caregiving journey and better care for your loved one and yourself. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. If you came across someone struggling with hunger, how would you recognize them? By their clothes, their age, the way they speak? Would you notice a 16-year-old boy, boy who, who got, got his, his first, first job, job, not for extra spending money, but to help feed his little sisters? Or a mother who's in between jobs and sometimes goes to bed hungry so her kids can have dinner? or a 14-year-old girl who signs up to every after-school activity not to make friends, but just to get something to eat. Or a retiree who fell ill and had, had to, to choose, choose between getting medicine or groceries. I am the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. People you pass by every day but never knew were hungry. I am hunger in America. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America, 200 Food Bank Strong, and the Ad Council. Now back to Fitness Fanatics on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. All right, welcome back in to the Fitness Fanatics. This next segment, we're going to talk about something that Harold's has been doing here in Lincoln. Uh, we've been partnered with uh, organization called Down to Box for the last year. So we've had three 
sessions where on Saturdays we have kids and adults. Um, just really for the last year, we've been focusing on with uh, kids and adults with Down syndrome, but we're uh, looking to expand that yeah. a little bit. And I'll I'll tell you um, when you guys are talking about the challenges and and like for me personally, before we started Down to Box, I had I really never had any interaction zero interaction either with somebody with down syndrome right zero and how old are you i'm 45 right um in my school there were kids with down syndrome there but they weren't i if i can, if i remember i don't think they were in class with with us like right. i just don't I, I don't remember that so it wasn't a part mm -hmm. of my life and i remember the first few weeks i was nervous like I was just like, and I think maybe that's how a lot of people feel. Sure. Oh, sure, sure. sure. Like, what do I, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I, like, I just had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> but so now. If Jeff can do it. Right. Yeah. Anybody, anybody can, do can get it. involved in any, anybody yes. can do that Barclay thing. Right. If Jeff can do something, <laughs> right. whatever you've been doubting, yeah. do it. <laughs> I know. But so what's cool for me over the last year is, is, is that when the kids come in. The adults are fun. Yeah. But when the kids come Jeff's in. Jeff's heart lies with the kids class. Seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten year olds. Mm -hmm. For us as gym owners, like mo when 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 Brandy comes to work out, she's not like <laughs> smiling, like excited so excited to be there. To come in. <laughs> running through Fast. running from that's the door. Accurate. Yeah. Hugging her friends. Like yeah, this accurate. is gonna be so awesome. Yeah, I don't do that. So yeah. most of our members don't actually smile when they see us. <laughs> <laughs> But on Saturdays, uh, our boxers yeah. love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and their parents tell us how they talk about it all week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like they're so excited. So we're starting up our next eight week session is starting up this Saturday. So we're excited to to see those kids and adults. And so it's been a really rewarding thing for me. Um because now it's like, it's just great. That's what we do. That's what we <laughs> do on Saturdays. Awesome. Yep. Well, I and, I, and I remember, and I know you remember this too. Um, <laughs> when we were starting down the box, we had to do like a training session to make sure that we understood what to do. Yeah. Um, and Jeff got a little teary eyed. Mm -hmm. um, I did. He did. Mm -hmm. He got a little teary eyed. Uh, just, and I remember talking to him and he was like, it just, everyone's so happy and they're, they're, getting to do something that they otherwise probably wouldn't have gotten to do, and which is the point we take for granted. Right. Too. Right. Also yes. that like, yes. that is something that is not offered to everybody right. necessarily. So it was just such a cool thing that we're able to use what we know that we are good at and what we can do and try to help other people too, in a different way. So that's what I love about it the most for sure. So you two, what what have you yeah. got out of, because you've been volunteering, you just started this last session with mm -hmm. your first one mm -hmm. uh, being with us. So what, what do you, you like about it? What do, yeah. What do you like about Down to Box? How, is it similar? How is it different from Unified? Is it similar to Unified? Do you feel kind of like it's a similar? I think the great thing product. about it is like the variety of ages, you know, mm -hmm. like when we do Unified at Southwest, you know, we have people that are like. 14 to 18, you know, we don't have, yeah, yeah, like we have high school age students. We don't get to experience really anything else. And so I think the great thing about down to box is, you know, we're working with eight year olds and we're also working with adults mm -hmm. and like we, you get to experience like disabilities at different levels, you know, because someone that has a disability at eight years old and like 21 years, like they're going to, it's going to be a different experience. And so being able to like gain that knowledge from the different perspectives of those athletes and those boxers is really amazing. Mm -hmm. When I think too, you know, one of the things that again, if you are not um, exposed to different people often, <laughs> there's a common misconception that if an individual has down syndrome, then they're like another individual, oh who has down syndrome, yeah. Yeah. you know, Not and, anymore. and, and that's just, like I said, just being inexperienced in working with different yeah. people, right? Like, or just McKenna, never having that exposure. Right. Like McKenna is very different from Eliana just because they're both two high school girls. Right. Um, yeah. doesn't mean they're the same. And so, uh, I think that's really cool too, because our volunteers get to, 
just like they would with other friends, learn about different personalities, learn mm-hmm. what works, learn what doesn't work, um, and hit some bags. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Make friends. Test some patience. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Especially the littles. Yes. I think the other, great, the other great thing, we were just talking about this, but I can't wake up early. Like, I don't willingly <laughs> wake up early, but I will fully get up early in the well it's not even that yeah, early yeah, like, like, 10, 10 a.m yeah. on they have, saturday they have to be at the gym at like yeah, 9 so, 55 well, this, this <laughs> like, so, i will be there it's, early yeah, it's not like 4 a.m <laughs> right. we're starting this yeah so i'll i'll wake up at like a good 8 30 or 9 instead of my usual 12 just yeah. for down to box like it's a it'll it's a good way to start that's my how i morning. feel too because it's you know we do our down to box sessions on saturdays and you know we we run a gym all week long and so by saturday we're pretty worn down and yeah. tired. And that was always, that was something that was kind of a concern about adding right. something on a Saturday, right. yeah. but immediately it is energizing yeah. to be there. It's not another thing that I have to do in my week. You know, it is something that I look forward to. I know even if I am tired, I know I'm going to feel energized by right. Just and inspired by it. So I really enjoy it too. And so it's kind of the same, mm-hmm. same thing. It's and I worth think- it. The other thing, while we do do adaptive workouts, like it's still hard. Like, oh, yeah. granted, yeah. I'm out of shape, but like <laughs> I, I get, I genuinely get a workout in, and yeah. like it's not our easy final as session was think it is. something. That yeah, final sure. that was a lot of movement in that so one. Fun. Yeah. But I also want to give you guys credit because just being with us in that last eight week session, um, just your experience has shaped our program in a different way. So it's been really great to have you guys in there because just your experience and you're not, because we have had a lot of volunteers that are adults or just not as familiar with that environment. And you guys just like come right in step right away. And it's been, it's changed kind of how Brandy and I have talked about what we want to do going forward, because especially those last couple uh, classes, being able to give you guys a little bit of freedom to, you know, work with your boxers separately. And that might be something that we change kind of going forward. And that's been really cool to have you guys um, in there. And then hopefully we can, I think we're going to have some more adults like uh, coming back to, to volunteer and you're just going to kind of expand what they, what they've been able to do too as volunteers. So it's been really fun to see it's really interesting how much the boxers, how especially the adults, because some of them are in high school or a little just out of high school, and the way they interact with you guys so different than the way they interact with yeah. us. So mm-hmm. because they're they, like in this cool club that we right, can be a part yeah, of because we're old for sure. <laughs> the first time, like the first time you guys volunteered, um, I was like, why am I even here? Especially afterwards <laughs> with the adults. I had to kick one of our boxers off the mat because you guys are all taking selfies together. <laughs> Nobody wants to, us to be in the selfies with ever before, but I had to be like, okay, we, our kids class is getting ready to start. You need to like, you need to go, <laughs> you know, but it's really cool to see. Um, and I love that about, about what we do yep. for down to box. So, so we're, that. we're looking to grow that. So if you, yeah. if you have any, any, uh, kids or adults that, you know, with Down syndrome or any other disability, mm-hmm. we yep. would love to, yeah, to have let's them. Look forward to let's do it. adapting. And the good news is, you don't have to rely on Jeff and I to come up with you. We have experts, yes. in our midst that know exactly how to adapt. And mm-hmm. we have really changed our program just in the last year. It's evolved so much that yes, oh, it's so fun. So you I, can, if you're interested, you can just you can go to the DSAF website. Um, and they have like an enrollment link for for to do the down to box program. It's eight weeks. We start this Saturday, March thirtieth. It goes till May eighteenth, I believe, is the last day. I think day. so. Yeah, it's a hundred bucks for eight weeks and get gloves and and it's just a lot of fun. Every Saturday, so yep. our adult class is from ten to ten forty five. Yep. And so our adults is basically high school age. And okay. above. Yep. And then we have a kids program from eleven to eleven thirty. And I think our kids program runs like what's our youngest? Like six. Yeah, I seven. think so. Six or seven. seven. Yeah. And then up to thirteen. And obviously, depending on the needs, we can kind of yep. 
change that which group which group you're in and yeah. stuff like that so the 45 minute class could be kind of daunting so the 30 minute class for the younger kids is really good so is it is it 30 minutes for them or for us because <laughs> i feel like it's it's shorter for us that was our little <laughs> secret why don't you say yeah. that yeah well it's, it's starting to especially since they our boxers our little kid boxers they run pretty yeah, much just, half of the yeah the session because they have they know it should just be called to down do. to run yeah <laughs> like that's, that's... well now so in the fun. last the last four weeks once because nicole came up with um an idea for the bag to put shapes on there so yes. it's like yeah, yeah triangle square a plus sign so instead of trying to get them to figure out the the punching combos of one two three four which we do we, still incorporate yeah, sure, but... it's more let's punch the square yeah a yep. square triangle so yep. then they're giving combos but then they can visualize also instead yep. of trying to well, what's one, two. And yeah. but they, so they've been boxing way more. Yes. And I think it's recently. been really fun too. So down to box is amazing, right? It's this amazing organization that got started specifically for this purpose of, mm -hmm. of teaching people with down syndrome, how to box and kickbox. Mm -hmm. um, and we were told when we got started with our kids class um, by our trainer, I, I don't know how to help you with this, this group because I've never the had, yeah, group. I've never seen kids this little do it before. <laughs> and I think it has been so much fun to just come up with ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, and I haven't really come up with any, so I can't really take claim to that. But when I come in, you're like, I have an idea and I'm like, I love that idea. And then I pretend like it was my idea. Um, and so yeah, things like right. coming up with the shapes, um, you know, I, I can't count the number of times we looked at each other and we're like, why, Why did didn't we do this in day one? You know, it just, and and they love it, but yes. that's, that's what makes unifying things so great is stumbling on those things that are like, aha, mm -hmm. now we can do it this and way. And this helps it, yes. making it, yes. you know, I don't know, knowing the group yeah. of people that we yeah. have and the shapes that are, that came from, you know, a new, new groups of kids coming right. in right. and like, okay, thou are new uh challenge is we have this group that knows exactly what to do because they've been doing it for the last mm -hmm. you know three sessions integrating new people and how can we do that when yep. it's six to you know 12 13 year olds and so i think that that has been really what has kind of sparked all of that so all right well exciting. let's let's go to break we got yep. one more segment to to wrap up here this show we'll be right back on 93.7 the ticket the fitness fanatics are you working in or looking to get into the electrical construction industry? The electrical workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. Alexa, play 93.7 The Ticket. Okay, playing 93.7 The Ticket. Alexa, turn down the lights. Dimming the lights. Alexa. Order a pizza, the big one, all the toppings. Are you sure that's a good idea? Alexa. That's a lot of pizza for just one man. Alexa, just do it. Stop judging me, just do it. As you wish. Thanks, Alexa. You're my best friend. Animal Hospital in Lincoln, it's not just a professional care that sets them apart, but their warm staff and state-of-the-art facilities. Whether it's for a routine checkup or a comprehensive medical procedure, at Parkview, your pet isn't just another number, but a valued member of their caring family. Visit them at pahlincoln.com today and in person just south of 14th and Pine Lake Road. Parkview Animal Hospital, your pet, our passion. For happier, healthier furry friends. Hey, it's me, your cell phone. We need to talk about something, something serious. I know you love me. I know you like using me wherever you are, but I feel like this isn't working out when you're driving. I know you may think that it's possible to focus both on me and the road, but I just don't feel the same way. I think we should spend time away from each other when you're driving. It's for the best. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Okay, kids, Dad's going to teach you how to dance. First, spread your feet apart. Then, a pump your knee, a nod your head, shake your hips, and bite your lip ever so slightly. Now, with one hand in the air, point at people with the other hand. I call that the rock star. Dance like a dad. It's a great way to make a moment with your kids. Now, make a face like it just smells something bad. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. As an 18-year-old, I let my mistakes kind of take over my life. 
I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school and I didn't do it. 10 years later, at age 28, Jackie finished her high school diploma. When I found out that I was pregnant, I know that I had to do something for myself if I wanted to make her a better person and provide a better life for her. My family never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew what I could become and who I could become as a person. My support team is amazing. The educational director, my sister, and even my seven-year-old daughter, she's been more than the support that I could ask for. I've been given an opportunity, and I'm just thankful for it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Dance like a dad. It's a great way to make a moment with your kids. First, I hold my hands out like they're on a steering wheel. Then I look over my shoulder. Next, oh, I put it in reverse. Beep, beep, beep. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Now back to Fitness Fanatics on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. All right, just got a few minutes here. A quick programming note, we will not have an episode of Fitness Fanatics next Sunday, Easter Sunday, so they're giving us the day off. So we appreciate that. So we'll be back with you the following Sunday, which will be our two-year anniversary of the Fitness Fanatics. Crazy how that's flown by. All right, so Brandy, yep. if there's parents out there that want to know how to get involved, yes. like if they have kids with disabilities, uh, how to look in and, or a student and, or, that or maybe student. wants to help yes. out. Yeah. Yes. What's the best way for them to, to do that? Yeah. So, um, I think, you know, the quickest and easiest way to see if you are a good fit to volunteer, or if you're a good fit to be a boxer would be to reach out to you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, just call the gym or, um, you're more than welcome to hop on, uh, D S A F Nebraska.org. That's where you can sign up to be a participant. Um, but what about with the school? Yeah, the like with us? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, they could, unified. I mean, they can, like if, oh, unified. I thought you were talking about right. down to box. No, oh. with unified. Like, so if Ben, our <laughs> yeah. son, wanted yes. to get involved, so every what school, would he do? Okay, so yeah. every school um, in LPS, like I said, uh, even our elementary schools have some special Olympics stuff. If you are a student, if you are a parent who thinks your student would be interested, contact your school and find out who's in charge of either your special Olympics um, or your unified activities. Um, and if that doesn't work, if they're like, oh, we don't, we don't have that, and that's something you want to maybe consider getting involved in or maybe put in the ear of somebody, <laughs> reach out to your special education coordinator um, because a lot of times they have additional resources for you um, either in the school district or in the community that, community that your child could get involved in. You said mo most all LPS schools have. Yeah, they have something. Sports. Yep, something. Yeah. Okay. And awesome. then what's your guys' Instagram? It is oh. LSW underscore unified. Give us a follow. <laughs> we post different opportunities that we have on there. And then also just like ways to be inclusive and just things to know about unified and the disability community. So definitely check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. We followed. So we'll keep an eye on the followers and see how many fitness fanatics will follow LSW unified. Yep. Underscore All right. Any, unified. let's get some, some parting words. Maybe some advice you oh, can give. Do you have advice? I have a quote. Do you want a quote? Yeah, we'd love I it. I just found yeah. it the other day, you guys, and I love it. Are you ready for this? Yes, yeah. we're ready. Your purpose is not the thing you do. It is the thing that happens in others when you do what you do. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Like Sounds that. very yeah, unified, like huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. good one. Yeah, yep. that's, yeah. I found it this morning. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm like, wow. wow. It's, it's it fate. Yep. It's yep. fate. Yep. yep. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I feel like that's a good place to fade off, right? Yeah. yeah. That's good. <laughs> we got oh, two oh, minutes. Okay. Um, well, I never okay. know. And I feel like I can't see Harrison because I have, I have my back okay. to him. Ladies, what's the next thing you would like to see unified? Oh, there Ooh, we yeah. go. We, yeah. We've had this question before. And okay. Every that's time we draw a blank because I feel like. Well, you Is were just class? talking about unified speech or debate. Yes. yes. Debate. Yeah. Our school personally does not have it, but I saw on the NSAA Instagram the other day that um, I think it was a few Omaha schools have unified speech and debate. Mm -hmm. And it was showing like some pictures and clips of like what they do and they have a slideshow with them and they essentially read off the slideshow. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be something really yeah. cool to implement. Yeah. yeah. 
and I mean, like we've said before, we have the most amazing staff that would definitely accommodate that. And I think that would be awesome to do. What do you think, E? Um, I know that um, I've heard like our special education teachers or life skills teachers talk about it too. And I think it'd be really cool is to do like a unified culinary. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Because like on Fridays um, in the life skills room during third block, we do do like cooking and like we just make different snacks or whatever. But like, I feel like cooking is <clears throat> definitely like an essential skill to yeah. have. Yes. So I feel like that would be like really cool to like be able to like work with our athletes and like even some of us need to learn how to cook. Yeah, you so. know. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, I think that would be a really cool unified activity or class to add in. Mm-hmm. That would be cool. You guys will yeah. have to have uh, our other other unified coach, Coach Brendan, because I was going to yeah. say unified Benji ball. She would love that. That's it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, thank you guys for coming in and, and sharing your stories with us. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll be back yep. here in a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. So have a great couple weeks, and we'll see you here in the month of April. Fitness Fanatics 93.7 The Ticket.